Hi, I'm Tim Newton with Hawk Ridge Systems, and today I'm going to show you how to model and animate flexible components like the springs in this valve train. You'll see how in-context features can be used to model springs, but this same approach can be used to create other components like bellows or even cables. I'll show you how to easily add additional instances, and finally how I set up the animation like you're seeing here. We'll start out drawing the spring. Here I'm creating a center line for the sweep, and I've broken that down into two rigid sections on the end with a flexible section in the middle. We'll apply a dimension to one end and an overall length and make the two ends equal. Next, we'll sketch a circle for our sweep profile, and then we're going to fully define that using dimensions and relations. Now we'll create the three swept sections. I'm going to use the selection manager to choose the rigid segment from our center line sketch. Then we'll set the profile twist option to one and a half revolutions. Next, we'll convert the end face for our subsequent sweep, this time for the flexible section. I'm going to show that center line sketch and again use that selection manager to choose the segment. And finally, we'll do that all over again for the last rigid section. Here we'll test our spring using Instant 3D to change the length. This is a great way to test the design intent we've built in, and you can see our spring behaving as it should. Adding the spring to our assembly, we'll position it by first mating the endpoint of the spring to the spring pocket. Next, we'll make the center line concentric to the valve and that'll fully locate the spring. Now we need to add an in-context relationship so that the end of the spring moves with the spring retainer that's being driven by the rocker arm. To do that, we'll edit our center line sketch, and we'll set that overall dimension to be driven. Now to fully define the sketch, we'll add the relationship so that the end point of the center line and the spring retainer edge are coincident. And we've got it. Now our flexible spring will update its length based on the distance between the spring pocket and the spring retainer. Back in the assembly, we can test our model by moving the camshaft and rebuilding the model. You can see how it's working. Holding the control key to drag in another copy of the spring will mate that into place using the previous process, endpoint of the spring coincident to the pocket, and then making the spring concentric to the valve. Now to set up the in-context relationship. What we'll do is we'll go over to the feature manager tree and make the part flexible. From there, we'll be prompted to redefine the external reference, and again, we'll choose the edge of the retainer. This great feature streamlines the process and saves us from managing other copies or configurations of the component. Again, we'll test the motion and things look great. Let's hide the sketches to tidy up the display before setting up the animation. We'll create a new motion study and then set the duration of the study to six seconds for this example. Adding a rotary motor to spin the camshaft is easy. Just choose the location and set the speed. The last thing we'll do is calculate the results. Now you might want to review the study properties and change the frame rate to suit the speed of your animation. If it's choppy, try upping that. Once the calculation is complete, you can play it back or save out a video file that anyone can play. Well, that's exactly how I created these animations. Flexible components are a powerful tool that I've used successfully to create great visualizations. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something along the way. Check out our other videos, or better yet, check out hawkridgesys.com for much more information.